أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أأتخذ من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بدر لا تغن عني شفاعتهم شيئا لا تغن عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا لفي ضلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل دخل الجنة قال يا ليتك قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفرني ربي وجعلني من المكرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جود من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We begin uh, the 23rd juz, which is a continuation of Surat Yasin. As you know, Surat Yasin is <clears throat> the 36th surah of the Quran. And <clears throat> so we're going to be looking at the rest of it. We did a bit of it yesterday. And essentially, from verse 13 of Surat Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wadrib lahum mathalan ashab al qariya إِذْ جَاءَهَ الْمُرْسَلُونَ um, Give them the example of the people of that locality when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had uh, sent some messengers to them sent two, of, two messengers they denied these messengers they rejected the messengers and thus we sent a third one but again they weren't going to listen so that's why then you have from verse 20 وَجَاءَ مِنْ أَقْصَى الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلٌ يَسْعَى قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اتَّبِعُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ A person came running, hastening. When he saw his people doing this, he realized that they're in for big trouble. So he wanted to give them advice from within. Because if they're not going to listen to the messengers from outside, from uh, outside, then he should try to give them. So that's why he said, اتَّبِعُوا مَنْ لَا يَسْأَلُكُمْ أَجْرًا وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ These people aren't asking you for any payment or anything like that. Why don't you listen to them? Follow them. And then he explains his own situation. He's, he's saying, I got no self-interest in this. Why should I not worship the God who's created me? And to him, you're all going to be returned. Remember that. But unfortunately, they did not listen. This, According to the Mufassirin, this person was Habib al-Najjar. Habib al-Najjar. And... So then he even explained to them that you should, you should worship, it's in your best interest. They're telling us about punishments that are going to come, but they didn't listen. He then declared his faith openly to them. Inni amantu bi rabbikum fasma'oon. So then when he did that, they actually killed him. They killed him as well. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, look, he may have died for that, but look, Allah says in verse 27, He was said, you enter paradise. So he got paradise. And even when he gets to paradise, he's a proper, sincere individual who wants the well-being of his people. So even when he's alive, he's telling them, you know, basically sticking his neck out, you can say, putting himself out there to tell them that, look, be saved before you get destroyed. But they didn't listen. He got killed for that. And then in paradise, 
After Allah sends him to paradise, he says, قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ If only, if only my people would have known or would know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven me. My Lord has forgiven me and he's made me of the ennobled ones. So then eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses إِنْ كَانَتْ إِلَّا صَيْحَةً وَاحِدَةً فَإِذَا هُمْ خَامِدُونَ Ibra, uh, Ibn Abbas عنه, relates that this mu'min is basically very sincere. That even after he dies, he's not being selfish. He actually hopes that his people, if only they could have listened. Then, af- then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses that there's lots of people, that lots of communities who used to make fun and who used to joke around about the prophets that were sent to them. So you see that in, in verse 30 <coughs> that's mentioned. Actually, verse 30 mentioned what I mentioned. مَا يَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَهَزِيُونَ Any messenger that was sent to them, they would mock them. And, uh, and then Allah reminds them that, haven't I, do, do they not see that we've destroyed so many of the people before them? Right? Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some of the other important aspects in this surah is that there's lots of evidences for the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's awesome power and His omnipotence. Then after that, there's a discussion constantly about the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the Qur'an and there are mainly three types of evidences that you will find in here uh, regarding this. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really emphasizes the fact that you've got land which is desolate, dry, Right? It, there's no life in there and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it life by providing rain. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discuss, discusses the, 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 the complete routine and steady coming of the night and the day and then the sun and the moon. <clears throat> All of these things are in perfect sync and um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided the sun and the moon. Then number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses ships and vessels. Right? Especially those that are in the, in the water, in the sea, in the ocean. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you look at verse 41, uh, I mean, يَنْبَغِي لَهَا تُدْرِكَ الْقَمَرِ You know, the sun and the moon, they don't catch one another up. They have their own orbits. Allah discusses that. Then in 41, He says, وَآيَةُ لَهُمْ أَنَّا حَمَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ right? Another sign for them is that we boarded their progenies, فِي الْفُلْكِ الْمَشْحُونَ You know, on these large ships and vessels. Because generally they used to send their children out for sea voyages or whatever. وَخَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ مِن مِثْلِهِ مَا يَرْكَبُونَ And this is the interesting prophecy of the Qur'an, the miracle of the Qur'an. Right? These are, there's so many miracles, this is another miracle. We talked about the miracle of the Roman, uh, the Roman defeat and then their subsequent um, uh, triumph. And then there, there's several others. I mean this one is... Uh, which was also, we mentioned a few surahs back as well. وَخَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ مِنْ مِثْلِهِ مَا يَرْكَبُونَ We also have created for them things similar to it that they would ride upon. And that could be submarines, right? That could be hovercrafts, that could be anything, right? This is just Allah's way of telling us that, you know, maybe at that time those things weren't there, but there's going to be so many things that will be in the future. So that's another miracle. And Allah says that if we wanted, we could have just had them all drown. Right? They wouldn't be able to find any kind of help. They wouldn't be able to find. They wouldn't be able, nobody would hear them out there either. It's only the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those are the things that I mentioned here. Something very interesting. If you look at verse 36, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Subhan alladhi khalaq al-azwaja kullaha mimma tumbitu al-ard. Now, the idea that humans and animals have male and female and they come together and they produce, they re- reproduce and recreate, that was, that's understood, that's been known I mean, throughout history because that's the way we, we are born. Uh, however, people, uh, uh, th- th- there wasn't much of a, you know, this, this concept of plants having the same kind of idea. And all of these things, these are things that uh, were understood later. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says both here and in Wadhariyat, Surah Al-Dhariyat, right, that basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified is He who created the pairs, all of them, from that which the earth produces. وَمِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ 
and from themselves. So we knew about ourselves that we've got pairs. And that's how basically, you know, th these things happen. But then about everything that the earth produces has pairs as well. وَمِمَّا لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And also among all of those things that they do not know yet. And that's why we look at, even when you look at the study, you know, when you study atoms and to that level, the molecular level, you'll see that there are actually pairs even within that as well. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying at a time when none of this idea was there. Anyway, to move on, because we've got quite a few surahs to catch up to, because not only do we have surah Yasin, we have surah Safat, right, which is a slightly longer surah, and then we have a part of surah Zumar, surah Zumar. So inshallah, we can do this today. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying then, um, after that, much of the discussion is taken up by the Day of Judgment and lots of graphic detail about the Day of Judgment. So you have, وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدُ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Verse 48, مَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا صَيْحَةً وَاحِدًا All they're waiting for, right? All they're waiting for is just one, one scream, one blast, right? And uh, then Allah says, وَنُفِخَ فِي السُّورِ then the blast, then the trumpet will be blown or blasted. So now in terms of the, the blast of the trumpet, there are, according to many ulama, there are actually three blasts that we understand. The first one is apparently, according to some, it's called nafhatu faza. That's basically the initial blow of terror, where people will hear it and they'll just be terrorized by that. Then after that, another one, and that will make them swoon and die. And then only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remain. Kullu shay'in halikun illa wajha. And then the third one, the blast will be when they'll be resurrected again. Right? That will be the resurrection. And that's why Allah says, In kanat illa sayhatan wahida, fa idahum jami'un ladayna muhdarun. They will all become present in front of us. Others have taken it differently. They say the first one is for the death of everyone. The second one is for the death of the particular ones that were left, uh, that, that were left alive. Like maybe Israfil, uh, sorry, Azrael, Israfil, and others. Allah knows best. Allah then makes a declaration after that about the Day of Judgment. No nafs will be oppressed in any way whatsoever. You'll get the recompense for everything that you used to do. And then Allah mentions the people of paradise. This is beautiful. 55. The inhabitants of paradise on that day will be enjoying themselves, engaged in an activity. Shughul. Shughul means an activity. Now you understand what kind of activity this is. By the next verse, hum wa azwajuhum, them with their spouses, fi zilalin, right, in these shades, al al araiki muttakiun, sitting in these special canopied, uh, canopied seats, right? And many ulama have mentioned that this is basically husband wife relationship this is referring to in paradise. And what is paradise without a spouse? In fact, every, nearly every depiction of paradise is with a spouse. That's why you will be with your spouse in paradise, not necessarily with your parents or children, because they have their own spouses to be with. Yes, you can maybe visit one another, that's different, but in terms of who you're going to live with, share your paradise with, is going to be your spouse. So make that good in this world. Anyway, then after that, the disbelievers and the transgressors, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them on that day that in the world you may have mingled and shown yourself to be among good people, whereas you were bad. Today, وَمْتَازُوا الْيَوْمَ أَيُّهَا mujrimun. Today, become separate. Separate yourself. أَيُّهَا mujrimun. أَلَمْ أَعْهَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ الشَّيْطَانِ Right, that we, didn't we tell you before that, yeah, O Bani Adam, that you shouldn't worship the shaitan? And so on and so forth. Then he says, هَذِهِ جَهَنَّمُ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ You should really read this, the various different aspects related to hellfire that I mentioned. So you see all of this discussion uh, between 49, 66, uh, all of that discussion is there. Then after that, since one of the big things to establish was resurrection after death, and since the discussion is about the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about resurrection after death again, establish that idea. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verse 81, The one who created the heavens and the earth, isn't he able to 
create like them again. Bala, of course. Oh, al khallaq al alim. He is the supreme creator and the knowledgeable one. Because whenever he wishes, innama amruhu idha arad whenever he wills anything, all he has to do is he has to say kun. And even that, according to, you see, this about Allah says kun and then it becomes whatever it is for anything. There's actually two opinions about this. According to one group, the Maturidis, the Hanafis, they basically say that kun here is just symbolic. It's just to say that how fast Allah can create something. He's not even obligated to say kun. He can just create things just by willing it. Whereas the Ash'aris um, and uh, the Shafis, etc., they say, no, he uses the kun, so a word, the kalam of Allah is used then to basically produce, uh, produce the creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. فَسُبْحَانَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ مَلَكُوتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ So glorified is he in whose possession is the supreme ownership of everything and to him you will all be returned. So that, those were the major discussions in this chapter. right? Those were the ma- major discussions in this chapter. And uh, as I said, if you read it inshallah every morning, you will find that within a few months, you will know it half off. You will know it, right, roughly speaking. And then after that, Allah will make it even easier and then eventually you will know it. Right? And this is a surah that you know and those who know it, and also those who don't, then you need, we need to really understand why Allah has told us to recite this because of all of the lessons which are in here, especially about the Day of Judgment and Paradise, the encouragement to Paradise, and also following the order, following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command, following the deen. All of these are emphasized in this surah. That's why uh, those of us who've been reciting Surah Yasin for years and years and years, decades, right? Now we need to actually start really understanding uh, what we're reading when we inshallah read it. So as I said that we've got a detailed tafsir of this on Zamzam Academy which you can listen to as well if you want to following this. Now we move on to the next surah and this is another beautiful surah, right? It's such an easy surah to read. I mean it has some complicated parts for the Hafiz of the Quran but in terms of the, the lyrical quality of it, in terms of the, the sound, the rhythm and it's very easy flowing. And he actually starts off with وَالصَّافَّاتِ صَفًّا فَالزَّاجِرَاتِ زَجْرًا فَالتَّالِيَاتِ ذِكْرًا إِنَّ إِلَٰهَكُمْ لَوَاحِدٌ <clears throat> صَافَّاتِ صَفَ What does صَافَّات mean? صَاف from صَف صَفَ of the masjid Rows, lines So these are This is a Makki surah And it is the 37th surah of the Quran In the 23rd juz it has jumps up to 182 verses. Jumps up to 182 verses, but they're quite short, short verses, and uh, split up only into five sections. So you can tell the verses are actually uh, very, very short. And it begins with the discussion of the safat and the zajirat and the taliyat. These are essentially feminine plurals to speak about. Uh, they describe the angels. So these are the angels who come in rows. So it's actually wasafat. It starts off with a wow. This wow here, wasafat, is for qasam, right? Taking an oath by these, uh, by, by these angels because they're, they're, a, they're a huge, uh, incredible phenomena. So Allah is saying that they are also involved in the dhikr of Allah. Taliyati dhikra. And then Allah says that your Lord is just one. Thereafter, the first discussion is that inna zayyana sama dunya bi zinatil kawaki. We've adorned the heavens with, with stars. You know, both the fixed stars and the shooting stars, and it is being made protected. It's been secured from every shaitan, because initially, la yasma'una ila al-malai la'ala wa yuhdan. Now, when they go up, you see, before the Prophet sallallahu time, the way the shaitans used to, the jinn used to figure out certain ideas is they used to get on top of one another all the way up to the heaven jump on top of one another make a whole chain right or pole or whatever you want to call it and then they used to listen to what the angels were saying and then they used to basically pass it down when it used to get to the last person message had changed quite a bit with just a bit of the what they heard from above they used to then inspire this to their human counterparts or human friends or colleagues and then they, they are the psychics and the soothsayers and the palm readers and, and, and the, and the f- uh, fortune tellers, right? That's where they get a lot of this information from. 
uh, actually, most fortune tellers, that, uh, many fortune tellers, they don't know anything. They just uh, go by your reaction. They look at your face. They have certain cookie cut answers or questions or statements, which basically refer to 95% of people. And then they look at your reactions and then they say, oh, no, no, no. It wasn't like, oh, no, it's actually this. You're having marriage trouble and then look at your face and so on. Those who are actually more professional, they actually have a contact with the jinn, right? Because the jinn then speaks to your jinn. Everybody has a shaitan, right? Every human being has a shaitan. Our shaitans are most aware of us because they've been with us since birth. So their jinn will have a conversation with our jinn and they figure out certain things. But jinn are very imagination prone uh, uh, creatures because they're made of fire. They have a very, very fiery imagination. So they say some things which are correct and some things which are wrong. That's why you might wonder why certain people who tell you certain things, right, whether they be Amils or whatever, why they know certain things? Well, it's because of that communication generally. So it's a complicated way to do it. It's not difficult um, for people who know how to do that. But that's how it is. We're not supposed to, we're not supposed to rely on that kind of information because the, the, it's a very weak link. It's, it's highly suspicious and so on. But that's why sometimes certain things that some people say come true. Right? It's not because they can tell the future, it's because they've had this bit of information, they can work it out. And sometimes Allah just allows it, and sometimes it's just pure, uh, pure coincidence or God incidence. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses that, that when the Prophet's revelation began, the, the skies were, were uh, <clears throat> basically put on guard. So anytime a jinn used to go up and try to listen, there would be a shooting star. So these shayateen could not do that anymore. Now, does that happen still now or not? After the Prophet ﷺ had, had departed, the Qur'an had stopped being revealed? Some ulama say yes, now that's been, you know, that was only for that time. Others say that no, it's been stopped since that time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Thereafter, there's a huge and beautiful, uh, terrifying actually, discussion. Uh, a very eloquent, obviously the Qur'an is eloquent, of the Day of Judgment. And how things are going to happen there. So, Allahu Akbar. Uh, this is obviously in response to the uh, denial of resurrection. Allah says, "Kul na'am wa antum dakhirun, fa inna ma hiya zajratun wahida, fa idha hum yanzurun, wa qalu ya wailana hatha yawm din." So the, actually, the theme continues from Surah Yasin. The theme continues this theme from Surah Yasin. Uhshuru al-ladin zalamu wa azwajhum wa ma kanu yabudun. Gather those oppressors, their 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 their, their spouses, and those that they used to worship. From uh, aside from Allah, فَهْدُوهُمْ إِلَى صِرَاطِ الْجَحِيمِ and guide them to the path of the hellfire. وَقِفُوهُمْ make them stand. <clears throat> They're going to be questioned. مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَنَاصَرُونَ right verse twenty-five. How come you're not ask, getting help from one another today? Why can't you help one another today? بَلْ هُمُ الْيَوْمَ مُسْتَسْلِمُونَ right today you completely submitted. وَأَقْوَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضِ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ and then now they start arguing with one another. So this is the day of the jaza. Then you have this from between verses 20 to about 35. This discussion is there. Now what you have is uh, the people of hellfire. They're going to be <coughs> cursing one another. All of that discussion is there. In the kunkuntum ta'tunana anil yamin. Used to come from our right side. You, uh, the others would say, no, you are never believers anyway. Right? You were just completely deviant. And, and so on. So, فَأَغْوَيْنَاكُمْ إِنَّا كُنَّا غَاوِينَ فَإِنَّهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ فِي الْعَذَابِ مُشْتَرِكُونَ They all share in the punishment today. إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ نَفْعَلُوا بِالْمُجْرِمِينَ This is what we do to the transgressors aggressors like that. Because whenever they would be said to them, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا الله, They would act arrogantly. And they would say that, Are we going to abandon, are we going to abandon our gods for this insane poet? بَلْ جَاءَ بِالْحَقَّ Allah says. No, he brought the truth. وَصَدَّقَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And he also confirmed what some of the other messengers had brought. Today you're going to face the punishment. إِلَّا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ الْمُخْلَصِينَ Verse 40. Accept Allah's sincere servants. And mashallah now you have them speaking about paradise. أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ رِزْكُمْ مَعْلُومٌ فَوَاكِهِ جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ سُرُّرٍ مُتَقَابِلِينَ Now they're going to be sitting there. The, all of that depiction is there. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a discourse, a conversation that they will have. Because remember, they will all get together and speak as well. فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَسَأَلُونَ They will now start speaking to one another. قَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ One of them will say that, you know what, I had an associate. إِنِّي كَانَ لِي قَرِينَ Verse 51, right? I had an associate. 
يَقُولُ أَإِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ He used to say to me, Oh, are you of those who confirm this faith? Right? Oh, you're saying that when we die and become bones and, uh, you know, and, and so on, that we're going to be resurrected and, and given, given a recompense for all of this? قَالَ هَلْ أَنْتُمُ الطَّلِعُونَ So now the discussion is that, shall we go and check where he is? Ya Allah. Shall we go and check where he is? What, what's happening to him? فَالطَّلَعَ And then he will look. Right? And they have this special way. Now Allah knows, you know, from paradise, the people in paradise, they'll be able to see the people of hellfire. And that will basically make their enjoyment even greater. Alhamdulillah, I've been saved from that. The shukr to Allah. فَالطَّلَعَ So he will look. فَرَآهُ فِي سَوَاءِ الْجَحِيمِ And he will see him in the middle of the, the hellfire. Now how he will look, Allah knows best. May will give him a vision. He's got a screen there. He can just basically request it. Allah knows best. قَالَ تَاللَّهِ إِن كِتَّ لَتُرْدِينَ And he will say, Wallahi, you are nearly going to basically blow me over. Like you are nearly going to deprive me all of all this. You are going to nearly cause me to deviate. وَلَوْلَا نِعْمَةُ رَبِّي وَلَوْلَا نِعْمَةُ رَبِّي لَكُنْتُ مِنَ الْمُحْضَرِينَ Had it not been for the bounties of my Lord, then I would have been also one of them to be presented like you were. أَفَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَيِّتِينَ Subhanallah, this is something really to think about. You know when you have those times when you've got your friends who are not very practicing or basically not even believing and you just feel bad that why can't I do what they do? Why can't I also have these, uh, the, these relationships that they're allowed to do? Why can't I eat what they do? Why can't I go to the bar, the pub? Why can't I go discoing? Why can't I go to shisha bars like they do? And so on and so forth. Right? And, and basically do this whole false enjoyment. Sometimes, I mean, this is human beings. Human beings, the nafs pulls you to these things. Really mark these words, mark these verses, and, and think about the future. Right? If you have belief, this future is supposed to help us. Inna hadha lahu al fawzul azim. That's why Allah says that in verse 60, this is the true win and success. Limithli hadha falyamalil amilun. Allahu akbar. This is exactly what I'm saying. Allah says, for something like this, for the like of this, those who work should continue to work. Because this is what you're going to do. Adhalika khair. Allah really drives the point home. Isn't this superior nuzulan as basically hospitality? Am shajaratu zakum. Or that zakum plant or tree that is going to be given to the people of hellfire when they ask for something. طَلْعُهَا كَأَنَّهُ رُؤُوسُ الشَّيَاطِينَ Its fibers are like the heads of shayateen. They're going to eat it. They're going to have to fill their stomachs with it. And then hot water they're going to be given to drink. This is going to burn their insides. Ya Allah. The reason is, as verse 69 says, they found their parents deviated. They found their forefathers deviated. فَهُمْ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ يُحْرَعُونَ They just basically then followed on from what their father, this is your custom. Again, this, while this is about disbelievers, we also understand that sometimes your Islam is telling you one thing, your custom is telling you something else. You know, your Somali, Punjabi, Bengali, Gujarati, Egyptian, uh, Sudanese, or whatever Malaysian culture is telling you something else. When it's a clash, it's a problem. Otherwise, culture is a beautiful thing. That's what identifies us. Nothing wrong with culture unless it goes too far. And it basically, because whatever Allah tells us, that is basically what's superior and best for us. Allahu Akbar. Uh, thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions several prophets, right? Just quick anecdotes. Just ease, uh, Ibrahim and Islam's story is again lengthy. And there's some very unique points in there that are not mentioned anywhere else. But the others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off with the discussion of Nuh alayhi salam. ثُمَّ أَغْرَقْنَ الْآخَرِينَ They didn't listen after all of that da'wah. So then they were all drowned. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, from his progeny comes Ibrahim alayhi salam. And there are two aspects. Number one is his belief. His, how he discovered oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then how he, how he basically destroyed all the idols and abandoned them. That whole story about then him being thrown into the fire, that's mentioned in brief. However, from verse 100 and actually 100, when he asked, when he leaves the area and then he says, Oh Allah, give me from the Salihin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the glad tidings. And then the whole discussion is there that you will hear on Eid al-Adha relating to the Hajj as well. This is the story of Ismail alayhi salam. He's growing up and uh, then him, uh, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam seeing a dream 
Allah, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam says, Ya Bunayya, my beloved son, I am seeing in my dream that I'm slaughtering you, sacrificing you. What do you think I should do? He says, Oh my father, do exactly what you've been told to do. You're going to find me from the patient ones. All of that discussion is there when he lays him down to do it. Now, out of all of the tests that Ibrahim alayhi salam was given, right, they were quite severe tests, leaving his wife there in the first place, in Makkah, Mukarramah, nobody there. This is probably the most severe, getting a child at a very old age, letting him grow up, nurturing him and then after that having been told to sacrifice him but Allah said it prophet's dreams are wahi so then he he tried to sacrifice him but that's not what Allah wanted he just wanted to test him that's why Allah sent a ram from the heavens and he said وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عظيم. right that's the greater sacrifice that you give give that sacrifice until now we, we do qurbani based on that, that idea Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about giving him Ishaq alayhi salam as well. Thereafter, that, the discussion of Musa and Harun alayhi salam is there again, how we assisted them, we guided them to the straight path. Thereafter, the story of Ilyas alayhi salam comes about. Ilyas alayhi salam comes about. Now, his people, he was sent to some group in Sham, and his people had this obsession with the Ba'al, the, 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 the idol called the Ba'al. That's why Allah mentions here, that uh, he said to his people, don't you fear, atad'oona ba'lan, you call on to this ba'al uh, idol, وَتَذَرُونَ أَحْسَنَ الْخَالِقِينَ The best of creators, you abandon them. So ba'al, I mean, there's a place called ba'al bak. I think it's in Lebanon. Right, I think it's in Lebanon, ba'al bak. And that is basically coming from that. Many of you, uh, you know, studied Arabic grammar will know that ba'al bak is this murakkab mana' sarf. You know, just to basically enliven that for you. If you don't understand that, don't worry about it. Right, for those who don't, that's just a bit of a refresher for Ba'al Bak. That's uh, a- a- attributed to this Ba'al, all right? So this is the great story of the... the um, uh, then he says, Salamun ala il Yasin, right? Verse 130. That's in other qira- qiraat, I think that's Salamun ala Ali Yasin, the family of, uh, family of Yasin. Il Yasin, Al Yasin. Uh, it's kind of interesting. You can check that up. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses Lut alayhi salam and how he uh, uh, dealt with the people of uh, uh, his area as well and so on. Then there's the discussion of Yunus alayhi salam and his escaping uh, from his people when they didn't listen, thinking the punishment was going to come, him going into the fish. And Allah says, Allahu Akbar. Allah says, فَالْتَقَمَهُ الْحُوتُ وَهُوَ مُلِيمُ Verse 142, the whale swallowed him up. فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ Very interesting. This is Allah telling us, right? Lesson from that story. Had he not been of those who glorified Allah, لَلَبِثَ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ He would have remained in that whale, in that fish, until the day of resurrection. Now that's interesting because it's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that we kitted out that whale, right, to be his container, to be his, his submarine. So that was, you know, so the, the, the whole inside of it couldn't attack him, right? It was ke- keeping him preserved. And he would have stayed there. Because otherwise the whale would have just thrown him out, right? Digested him, thrown him out. He would have stayed there. But because he is from the musabbihin, those who do tasbih, subhanallah, 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 wa bihamdihi subhanallah al whichever subhanallah, he came out. Either in a few hours, it says, or three days. Some say a bit longer. But this tells us whenever you're in trouble, you're stuck somewhere, you don't know what to do, remember this, do the tasbih of Yunus alayhi salam. Because if Allah is saying if he didn't do that tasbih, he would have been in there until the day of resurrection. فَنَبَذْنَاهُ بِالْعَرَاءِ وَهُوَ سَقِيمٌ He was sent to the shore, right? That's where the whale threw him out. And then after that, we gave him a special pl- uh, tree. We had to grow there of the gourd, right? And basically, we gave him to feed from there. And uh, again, this place is just before Al Khalil, Hebron in Palestine. You can visit it. Apparently, that's where it is. That's not where he is buried. That's just where he was, where he recuperated after this um, emaciating experience. Anyway, thereafter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala carries on the discussion of a number of other prophets are mentioned. 
You see, the verse that I want to point out after all of this discussion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kind of sums it up, verse 171. إِنَّهُمْ لَهُمُ الْمَنْصُورُونَ وَإِنَّ جُنْدَنَا لَهُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ Our words have passed, right, with regards uh, to our sent servants, that they will be assisted. They will have full assistance from Allah. They've got the divine assistance. And it is our jund, right, it is our army which will dominate which will be victorious. So just ignore these people. Don't worry. Again, lots of comfort, consolation provided to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah reminds in 176 that they're asking for the punishment to come quickly. But when that punishment does come, then that morning for those who are warned is going to be a really bad one and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends it by subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salamun ala al-mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen this is uh, off quoted verses at the ends of du'as and so on and what it means just in case you're wondering when people read it Subhana Rabbik, glorified is your Lord, Lord of might, from that, meaning He is glorified, transcendent and purified of that which they describe and attribute to Him. And peace for the messengers, peace upon all those who have been sent as messengers, and all praise is to Allah, Lord of the worlds. That's essentially the gist of this surah, and Allah tells us to do tasbih by that at the end of it. Yes, I pointed out all the verses to you, so insha'Allah, that ends our Surah to Safat, which is the 37th Surah. Now we move on to the 38th Surah of the Quran, which is Surah Saad. Saad, just one word. Saad wal Qur'ani vi dhikr. This, again, as you can work out, is probably a Makki Surah. It is a Makki Surah. It's 188 verses. Again, short, short verses. It takes up about just over, yeah quarter quarter of a juz and that's a, uh, so as you can see now they've put the surahs with a lot of verses but short ones in size with the ones which are less than a hundred as well because the sizes are kind of similar so again it's huruf muqatta'at so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wal qur'an dhikr the qur'an which is full of reminders and then it says that people who disbelieve they're, they're, they're in huge difficulty and dis, uh, discord And uh, how many we've destroyed before them They called on to all their worship, uh, all their idols and so on So anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Again, he, he, he takes an oath He swears an oath by the Qur'an So Saad, wal Qur'an This wow again is for an oath Wal Qur'an is the dhikr Either the oath is to establish the fact that the Qur'an is his words or it's to establish that the Prophet ﷺ is his messenger. right? Because there's a reason you take an oath. Now, initially there's lots of discussions about the, again, the azamah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the might, the majesty of his creation, all the effects we see in his open book in the universe, his oneness of that. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses the, the kibr, the takabur, the arrogance, the, the idiocy, the, 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 the foolishness, the ignorance that they were involved in. And uh, that why don't they listen? Inna hadha la shay'un ujab. Allah says, like look at number five, right? Uh, number four, it says that they are surprised that a prophet has come to them. And he's saying that, oh, he's just a magician, he's a big liar. Then Allah says, D- they've... Um, in uh, they, they, this is their contention, right? That are they? Uh, you know, does he say that all all these laws just there's just one Lord? That all of these idols they're not laws, then there's only one Lord. I mean, how can you um, shrink the pool for us? Why are you just telling us to worship one God? You know, we got all of these different gods that we can worship. In this is a very strange, astonishing idea. Anyway, it carries on. 
So all of that discussion is there. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses what happened to them. وَمَا يَن... uh, as you can see from verse 15, so on. وَمَا يَنظُرُ هَؤُلَاءِ Why? They're just waiting for one shriek. So the Prophet sallallahu is told that, look, even though they tell you hurry up with the punishment, just isbir ala ma yaqulun. Isbir. Be patient upon what they say. And then Allah mentions to him two prophets. Right? And there's a considerable amount of detail there about these. One is Dawood alayhi salam. And one is Sulaiman alayhi salam. And how they were given so much more than so many else. So, so many other people. So Allah says, وَذْكُرْ عَبَدَنَا دَاوُدَ ذَا الْأَيْدِ Remember uh, our messenger, Dawood alayhi salam. Our servant, Dawood alayhi salam. إِنَّهُ awab is always off repenting to Allah. We subjugated the mountains with him. Right? And they would do tasbih. Morning, uh, in the evening and in the morning. And also... When he would sing, remember he had this amazing voice to sing the psalm, to read the psalms with. So the, the, it says that the birds used to actually stop and listen as well. كُلُّ لَهُ أَوَّابُ وَشَدَدْنَا مُلْكَ We strengthened his kingdom. Right? وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحِكْمَةِ وَفَصْلِ الْخِطَابِ We gave him wisdom. We gave him amazing ability of speech and address. And then there's an incident that's mentioned in these verses that follow from verse 21. Right? And uh, that was to test him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, then, then goes on to uh, discuss Ya Dawood, inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ard. Verse 36. We've made you the khalifa in the earth. Fahkum bayna nasi bil haq. Make sure you just in your, uh, in your judgment among people. Wala tattabi il hawa. And this is obviously a lesson for all of us. He's repeating that, that do not follow your fancy and your whims and your other selfish inclinations so that uh, you know you, it may cause you deviance from Allah's path being becoming a judge is very difficult especially if you have a lot of alliances and associations and biases this is the trick this is the difficulty in all that and there's very few people who will actually stand firm in that case even against people that you know he benefits from or that are associates of his or friends of this it takes a very specific type of person to do that. So Allah in emphasizes this. Right? And remember, if you're making biased judgments in whatever you do, whatever that be, then that's very dangerous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then discusses we didn't create between the heavens and the earth for nothing redundantly. This is just the opinion of those who disbelieve. And so on. All of that discussion is there. Then Sulaiman alayhi salam's discussion comes. And again, there's a test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses about giving to Sulaiman alayhi salam. But again, both of these servants were wonderful because Allah had given them so much, but they were so grateful. They were constantly remembering Allah. That's why Sulaiman alayhi salam actually said, and the Prophet alayhi salam actually quoted this later as well, uh, My Lord, forgive me and give me a kingdom that is basically after me, not going to be appropriate for anybody. So give me a kingdom, forget unprecedented, that will never come about again. Right, So that's why once the Prophet ﷺ said that he saw a jinn or shaitan and he was going to grab him. But then he remembered Sulaiman Alayhi dua so he left him because he didn't want to subjugate it. Right? And then it talks about the, the air, the wind being subjugated. Tajri bi amrihi rukha and haythu asab. Pleasantly, it, will, it would travel wherever he wanted. And then the shayateen that used to work for him and others that he basically had locked up. مُقَرَّنِينَ فِي الْأَصْفَادِ هَذَا أَطَاؤُنَا This is our gifts فَمْنُنْ Show favor أو أمسك بغير حساب Or, you know, without any, without recognition It's up to you however much you want to do from there But Allah praises him وَإِنَّ لَهُ عِنْدَنَا لَزُلْفَى وَحُسْنَ مَآبِ It's got a wonderful return to us Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Ayyub alayhi salam story Now, we've mentioned Ayyub alayhi salam several times Ayyub alayhi salam story is the paradigm, the archetype, st archetypal story of patience. All right? Sabr, sabru Ayyub. And apparently Ayyub alayhi salam is, I visited Shani Urfa, which is a southern area, a uh, southern city in Turkey. And they have Ibrahim alayhi salam. They say that that is where he originally was, Ur. That's where he was thrown into the fire. And there's like a pool there right now with fish inside. 
and there's a cave and everything you can visit all of that and then next to it there's another place where it says that this is where Ayyub salam was and again there's a cave in which he stayed then there's a, a water source next to it people fill up bottles from there that this is that special magical water or that special health water rather right that he was told to wash himself with and all of his so essentially what happened is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given Ayyub alayhi salam a huge amount of bounties and and benefits and everything like that huge amounts so uh, he, he had homes houses buildings um, crops orchards fruit trees just Allah had abundantly given him right in numerous cattle animals uh, whatever was is, is considered to be you know the riches of those days but eventually what happened is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a test on him so all of this wealth was lost all of this stuff was destroyed. He lost it all. And then on top of that, he basically lost his health. So he became extremely sick, filled with various diseases. According to some tafasir, this lasted for about 18 years. And in that time, all the people that were around him left him. They didn't want to know him anymore. I think it was only, it says his wife may have just remained with him. And I think uh, it was only his wife who probably remained with him. However, in all of this, he did not change his perspective to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaitan tried to attack him so many times. No. Sabr. Sabru Ayyub. Sabru Ayyub. Remember that. The Sabr of Ayyub. Job in English. Right? Biblical name. And the Shukr. You gave me so much before. I've got this small amount of difficulty right now. That was the Sabr and Shukr that he had. And that's why finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finished it off. He'd taken a certain oath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how to fulfill it, that he's going to strike his wife this many times. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him how to do it, you know, taking small, small strands and then do it once. So that way, lightly, that way it would be as though he's done it multiple times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a way out for him, told him to drink from, uh, told him to use that special water and he became better. I, I, I mean, just for the sake of it, I, I filled up some of that water as well, right? Allah knows best if it's truly from there or not because... Um, there's no economy in that area. I mean, there's, there's a few shops in that, but they're not like charging you to go in there or anything like that. The Turks are very good about it. They never charge to go into messages and places like that. Right? They, they, they think it's haram, I think, to do that. Right? So anyway, uh, after that, he becomes completely better and Allah then gives him so much more than before. Allahu Akbar. This is a lesson for a lot of us. There's people who've had to leave countries, leave areas because of persecution. They lost a lot. Somebody told me that there's somebody, because Uganda had a problem about 30 years ago or something, or 30, 40 years ago, massive problem. And that's why many, and it happened in several, like Malawi had a similar issue, right? And several other uh, countries as well. So lots of people had to just literally leave overnight with just a shirt on their back, as they say, and leave all their wealth. Burma, similar. They had basically, in Burma, they actually had like storehouses of currency, right? These were, these were the Indian Gujaratis, right, who did huge business there. And Maulana Abul, uh, Abul Hassan Ali Nadu, when he visited there, I think in the 1940s, he told them, look, you know, be careful, you need to. And then overnight, the government basically devalued the currency and people just had to run. Very few people got left behind. These are not the Rohingya, these were the Indians that had gone there. Uh, that is famous Surti Bazaar, the Gujarati Surti Bazaar there. They, they, they were doing big business. And now they're, they're in America, Canada, or in, in England and in other places. Similar thing from Uganda. Somebody told me about a guy who's come back from there 40 years. He's still depressed about the wealth that he lost there. And yet there's so many others. In fact, uh, so many of the prominent uh, Hindu community, those who've reached far, they're not from India originally. The ones who've gone in politician, pol in politician, uh, become politicians and so on, they're from Uganda. Right? So they've done very well for themselves. Lots of Ugandans have done very, but there's some people who are still depressed. And that's life. You know, this is dunya. That's why we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun when we lose something. That, okay, we all belong to Allah. We're going to go back to Allah as well. I mean, we just lost this. We're going to be lost soon. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us not to cry over spilt milk. Right? After Ayyub alayhi salam mentioned, then Surah Saad has Ibrahim alayhi salam's mentioned, Ishaq alayhi salam, Yaqub alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam, Al Yasa. Alisha, I think that's his name. I'm not sure in, in the biblical. And Dhul Kifl, right? Which is uh, Dhul Kifl in English is Izkil. I think that's how you say it, right? All of them are mentioned briefly. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically praises all of them. Thereafter that there's more of a discussion of uh, a longer detail of uh, Iblis and trying to mislead uh, uh, Adam alayhi salam. So Adam alayhi salam's probably got the longest discussion then afterwards. And then finally, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam several different things to do, how he should say, I, I, you know, his... Um, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا مُنْذِرٌ وَمَا مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ إِلَّا اللَّهُ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَهَارِ verse, You can see that in verse 65 and so on. And then finally, Allah says, ends it with, إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ Saad began with discussion of the Qur'an, says, This is also a reminder for the older worlds. وَلَتَعْلَمُنَّ نَبَأَهُ بَعْدَ حِينَ And soon you will know, you will have all of its information after a short while. So, alhamdulillah, that ends Saad for us. I just want to point out a few verses for you, right? Firstly, the verse I want to point out to you is verse 54. Inna ma lahu min nafad. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from a few verses before talks about paradise for the righteous people, he then says, this is our sustenance, ma lahu min nafad. There's no end to it. There's no depletion of it. Some people have found through experience that repeating this is a wadifa. This is a wadifa if you want barakah in your wealth. Right? If you want blessing and barakah in your wealth, then you repeat this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. I haven't really tried it. Right? I know somebody who, who used to read it. Right? Um, but uh, if, if... I mean, it's a verse of the Quran. Inna hadha larizkuna. He's just repeating what Allah says that this is our sustenance. There's no end to it. There's no depletion of it so inshallah Allah give you barakah Allah give us all barakah right Surah Al-Zumar is the next chapter Surah Al-Zumar is the 39th chapter of the Quran probably the 59th Surah to be revealed probably the 59th Surah to be revealed and uh, it has 75 verses and 8 sections part of it is in the 23rd Jews which we'll be looking at today and the rest of it is in the 24th juz. Inshallah, we'll cover that tomorrow. It starts off without huruf muqatta'at, but starts with discussion of the Qur'an. Tanzeel al-kitab min Allah al-aziz al-hakim. Revelation of the book from Allah, the mighty, the wise one. Inna anzalna ilayk al-kitab. We've revealed this book to you with the truth. Fa'budillah. The initial whole discussion is about ikhlas. Look at this. Fa'budillah mukhlisan lahu al-deen. أَلَا لِلَّهِ الدِّينُ الْخَالِسِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءِ مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَا إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَ So the discussion here is that we've revealed the book to you with the truth. So now worship Allah while sincerely dedicating the deen to Him only. For Allah is only the pure deen and pure faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, discusses several different reinforcements uh, about the aqidah of oneness. The, remember, the word tawheed is a transitive term. Ahadiyya, wahidiyya means oneness of Allah. Tawheed is actually correctly translated as declaring Allah to be one. It's an act. Allah is one, whether we like it or not. But tawheed is our responsibility. Wahidullah, wahada yuwahidu tawheed means. Declare God to be one. That's what Tawheed means. So all of that is mentioned and uh, shows that the oneness of faith is the basis, basically, of Iman. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the mu'jizah of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it. And uh, all of that discussion is there. Uh, ikhlas, as I mentioned. Thereafter, after these initial verses, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again tells people to read his open book of the universe and all of the dalail of his creation, his taqween, his genesis of, of these things. And all of those evidences I mentioned talks about shirk being one of the worst things that you can do, right? Verse 6, Allah says, خَلَقَكُمْ مِن نَفْسٍ wahida." Allah created you from a single soul, then from it he created a spouse, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created 
from the cattle's seven types. يَخْلُقُكُمْ فِي بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ Allah creates you in the wombs of your mothers. خَلْقًا مِنْ بَعْدِ خَلْقٍ You can say one creative stage after another creative stage. فِي ظُلُمَاتٍ ثَلَاثِ In three periods of darkness or three veils. Now there's lots of discussion, scientific discussion about that, which I can't go into right now because our time is nearly up. ذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمْ Think over that and then Allah says, that is Allah, your Lord. For Him is all the dominion. There is no God except He. So where are you turning to? Right? Where are you being turned to? And remember, if you do this belief, Allah is just so independent. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنْكُمْ Allah doesn't need you. Allah is independent of you. But Allah never is satisfied for, of, for, with disbelief for His servants. Never. وَلَا يَرْضَى لِعِبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ وَإِن تَشْكُرُوا يَرْضَهُ لَكُمْ وَلَا تَزِرُوا وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى So again, this is another mu'jizah of the Qur'an that it's giving you this biological understanding of these things, anatomical understanding of these things, which how can somebody 1400 years ago have claimed these things? If you carry on, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from verse... Uh, verse 11 is telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam inni umirtu uh, say that I've just been commanded that I worship Allah mukhlisan lahu ad-din that this surah is about ikhlas right it's just constantly re-emphasizing that be sincere in your faith if there's one lesson we learn from this Ramadan tafsir is sincerity in faith inshallah right let us make our and the, one of the benefits of sincerity in faith is that every time shaitan said I'm going to mislead your Servants, except your mukhlisin, except the mukhlis servants. So if Allah makes us of the mukhlis servants, that's it. So that's why Allah says, uh, we already had the beginning of the surah talk about ikhlas. And you know, somebody can calculate how many times ikhlas is mentioned here. I haven't done so today. Again, verse 11, um, that I basically worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, making the deen fully sincere for him. وَأُمِرْتُ لِأَنْ أَكُونَ أَوَّلَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ I have been commanded that I be the, of the first believers. Qul inni akhafu. And I fear that if I was to disobey my Lord, the, the punishment of the hellfire of fear. Qul illah, say Allah. A'budu mukhlisan lahu. It is Allah that I worship while making the deen sincere for Him. Fa'budu ma shi'tum min duni. So you go ahead and you go and worship whoever you want. Aside, besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah mentions what they're going to get what the people of hellfire are going to get, what the people of paradise are going to get. And uh, a beautiful verse, 24, Allah says, أَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ This comes from Allah. That the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has expanded their chest for Islam. So it's easy for them. If it's difficult for you, ask Allah to open your chests. Right? If it's difficult for you to, to agree, and you're always founding, you always have skepticism about things, and always, like, why is it like this? Why is it like that? Ask Allah to give you comfort. Because at the end of the day, why do you get those doubts and your brother doesn't? Or somebody else doesn't? Right? Doubts come from a particular place. Right? OCD comes from a particular place. And Allah is in control of these things. So ask Allah for help and may He help us. Anyway, whoever, whoever Allah has expanded their chest for the sake of Islam, then He is truly on the light of His Lord. And those, then Allah shows the woe and destruction for those whose hearts are hard to uh, let the, uh, the dhikr of Allah soak in. And then Allah subhanahu wa There's another verse which I uh, passed, al uh, verse 18. فَبَشِّرْ ibad. Give glad tidings to those servants of mine Those who listen to the, the speech And mashallah they follow the good So those who are listening To this speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And who are now going to follow The good that they've learned from this Who want to follow Who are going to ask Allah to make it easy for them Who going to make a decision to do so Then have the glad tidings Because these are the people who Allah has guided Remember that I talked about guided. One is to show them the way. The other one is take them there. These are the people of Allah taking them there. وَأُولَٰئِكَهُمْ أُلُوا الْأَلْبَابِ And if you want to be smart, this is your IQ test. Right? These are the people of intellect. 
This is religious intellect, spiritual intellect, right? Not just not just general understanding of the way the world works. And another verse that I want to point out came before verse ten. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ Say, O oh my servants who have believed, have taqwa, fear your Lord. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَ Those who do good, excellent deeds, in this dunya, right? For them is goodness. وَأَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسِعَةً Allah's land is of great expanse. There's lots of space. Can't worship in one place, go to another place. وَإِنَّمَا again صَبَرْ وَإِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ the one, re- the one deed that provides r- reward without limits is patience. And the, those who are patient will be given their full reward without any reckoning. And that's from Allah. That's why one of the worships which is full patience. Do you know what it is? Which worship is like, I think, nearly 100% patience? Like pure patience. Fasting. That's why for every other worship, the angels have a certain quota. Um, for salat, you get this base reward, then if you've got ikhlas, then this much more and so on. But as Allah says, as-sawmu li, fasting is for me and I'm going to directly give a reward for it. Because that's pure patience. One of the most difficult things to do for human beings. And that's why that's mentioned. And finally, the last part of this surah. Uh, sorry, the last part of this juz, right, ends with some discussion about um, uh, punishment and so on. But then from verse uh, 37, uh, is that 27 to 31, it's about an example Allah is providing. We've given all sorts of examples, all types of examples in the Quran so that they can gain understanding. This is a Quran in Arabic, with no crookedness. Maybe they will learn to fear, you know, maybe they will fear Allah. And then the example, another example that Allah provides here is very interesting, right? Allah gives an example of one slave. In the day you had slaves who was shared ownership, right, between two or three masters. And one master is telling him this, one, another one is telling this, and all of these masters, they don't work together. They actually hate one another maybe, right? They're mutashakisun. So Allah says, they're mutashakisun, they're in dispute with one another. So when he's telling him, go and do this, the other one said, doing this, this guy is going to go crazy. Should I do this? Should I? He's fearful of all of his masters. Right? And he says, there's another one, was rajulan salaman li rajul, who's just got agreement with one person. Now, when you've got agreement with one person that you've got communication with, you've got harmony with, then you're going to do a much better job. So Allah is providing this example for the people who do shirk, that just look, you recognize one God, just leave, j- just leave it to one God. All of these are throw away. You're, you're doing what you think, what you've imposed on these gods as having imposed on you that I must do this and I must do that, I must make this sacrifice. Whereas Allah is telling you to do something else. What kind of a, again, what kind of a psychological problem are you in? What kind of a mental health problem that it's going to reach, uh, that it's going to cause you? Be like the one who's just owned by one. Because you're a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he says, Hal yastawiyani mathala. Can those two be the same in example? Alhamdulillah, all praises to Allah. But Akhtarhum la alamun. Unfortunately, most of them just don't get this. You're gonna die, O Messenger. They're gonna die as well. Right? The Prophet has departed this world. The worldly death has happened. But they have a special death. The, angel, the, the prophets and the shuhada have a very special level of life, which is not the life of this world. It's, it's different. But they've had the mortal death of this world, but they still have life more than other people have life. Right? Even normal people can hear, right? Ma antum bi asma aminhum, right? As the Prophet mentioned in the hadith, right? Uh, um, uh, that even deceased individuals can hear, right? Sometimes when Allah wants them to, right? People who speak, right? By their grave or whatever. Uh, but prophets, for sure. Right, because that's our belief in the Hayatul Anbiya. Imam Bayhaqi, Rahimallah, has a huge, uh, you know, uh, treatise on this subject, and this is a kind of an agreement on, on the Ahlus Sunnah Wal Jama'ah that there's only few detractors in that regard, few groups, small groups that are detractors in that. ثُمَّ إِنَّكَ يَوْمَ ثُمَّ إِنَّكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عِنْدَ رَبِّكُمْ تَخْتَصِمُونَ And then after that, on the day of judgment, right, you will be then having this dispute with one another, and by that, our twenty-third juz 
Bihamdillah ta'ala has been completed. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq. Let us have a quick uh, recap uh, of this. We started um, with Surah Yasin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discussed the Habib al Najjar. If that's who the discussion is about, who uh, tried to get them to listen to the messengers, but they didn't, and eventually they killed him. So that discussion is there. And then there's numerous things about the Qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, paradise and hellfire, all of that discussion in Surah Yasin. Then we start Surah Safat, starts off with the discussion of the Book of Allah and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then there's a discussion of resurrection, which is there. Paradise is mentioned, punishment of, of the disbelievers is mentioned. Thereafter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, in, there's a very, very important verse that tells us a lot. Allah, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Nuh alayhi salam, verse 75, Allah says, وَلَقَدْ نَادَانَا نُوحٌ فَلَنِعْمَ الْمُجِيبُونَ Right, when we called on, to, um, when Nuh alayhi salam called on to us, dua, such beautiful responders we are. Like we accept duas. Right, so you can literally make a dua to Allah and say, Ya Allah, you call yourself Ni'mal Mujibun. You've referred to yourself as that. Please respond to me. Thereafter, that Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned. All of that discussion is there. Then Allah mentions and re- repels some of the uh, claims of the mushrikeen and says that it's only the Jundullah that is going to have, that is going to be successful. The army of Allah, right, the group of Allah. Um, then we have Surah Saad, and in there, there are again all of these discussions about the heavens uh, and the earth and everything within it, all the signs, giving comfort to the Prophet ﷺ about how all the other prophets also made sabr and so on. Sulaiman is mentioned everything that he had under his disposal, and, but despite that, he was not arrogant, he was actually very patient and thankful to Allah. Thereafter, there's a story of the Iblis and so on and not prostrating towards the end of the surah. Then we start Surah Al-Zumar. I didn't explain to you what Zumar mentioned. I can mention it later, but just for those who are curious, Zumar, plural of Zumra. Zumra means party, a group. So Zumar is basically groups. And we'll have more discussion of that later. But maybe Surah Al-Zumar, so far our discussion in there is that it's just full of ikhlas. Just huge discussion of ikhlas is mentioned in there. So check that out. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us ikhlas and sincerity. May Allah allow us to complete. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everybody. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.